Um, how much influence do, are you aware of or do you know of in your experience perhaps um, the terrorists and extremist Muslims, uh, perhaps, you know, shall we say the PLO or Hamas, um, they're involved in that situation. How much influence do they have over the Palestinians? Unfortunately, a great deal of influence, and uh, this, this plays into the whole, the whole idea of democracy in the Middle East. You have a lot of democracies in the Middle East, and they hold free and, and, and open elections, Lebanon, Jordan, although they have a king that ultimately rules, Egypt, the Palestinian Authority. Uh, and the Palestinian Authority is a good example, because several years ago, in 2006, they had a free and open election that was verified by Western observers, and they voted Hamas into power. Mm -hmm. Why in the world would a free and open society, democratic society, vote for a terrorist group like this? And the fact of the matter is that Islam is not fertile ground for a Western style of democracy, of what we think of as democracy. It's just not fertile ground for it, because in Islamic culture and in Arab, cult Arab, Arab Islamic culture, the guy with the most guns, the guy who is the scariest candidate, is going to win the election. It doesn't matter if you didn't like him, and it doesn't matter if he was the best for the job, he's going to win. And you saw it in the Palestinian Authority with Hamas, you saw it in Lebanon with Hezbollah. So, um, they wield influence very disproportionate to their size. Okay, I mean, like some people have said that within Russia, um, that Russians like to vote for stereotypical, you know, archetypal, strong characters. You know, you have the, the Stalins and the, the Putin, you know. A good example is like Putin riding the horse with his shirt off, you know. People like that apparently yeah. over there. So is that, is that the same or is it more like I would think that that the it's more of a fear? In exactly. The difference is that in, in a place like Russia, it's based on nationalistic pride. Okay. You know, they want their powerful leader and they want to, you know, to, to wield influence and power over the world. Yeah. In, in Arab culture, it's more based on fear. Okay, um, and I'd also and you like see it when you, uh, sorry to interrupt again, but, and you see it then when you go to, to interview some of these people, because they'll vote for Hamas out of fear, but then you go and talk to them privately or you interview them and all of them will ask you to use a different name so they won't get shot themselves. <laughs> but they'll all say, you know, look what Hamas has done to us. You know, everything was, was so much better before they came. In fact, a lot of Gazans that we interview today using, using uh, different names, we have, a Ru we have a Russian reporter that we can send into Gaza and she pretends to just be Russian. And she, anyone will talk to her, and they all tell her, you know, Hamas has ruined Gaza for us, and a number of them will even go so far as to say, we wish that the Israeli occupation would come back. So. <laughs> That's pretty strong words. Yeah.